Bougainville is a place of great significance on three levels. First, its history of being the oldest incorporated black municipality in the country it was founded in 1886 and its continuity of traditional culture. And third, it's the place where Zora Neale Hurston grew up. Yeah, uh, there's a quote from Zora where she talks about Eatonville, it's a great description. She said, it's Eatonville is the city of five lakes, three croquet courts, 300 brown skins, 300 good, good swimmers, plenty guavas, two schools and no jailhouse. That's how she described Eatonville. And those descriptions tell you a bit about Eatonville in terms of its lakes, the fact that it was an all black community. So you have 300 brown skins, 300 good swimmers because of the lakes, everybody knew how to swim. There were schools, two schools, but no jailhouse. So it was a community, a, a kind of peaceful community where if someone was not keeping the peace, they wouldn't go to jail, they'd be run out of town. Um, because it was a community that valued its peacefulness, even when people didn't always agree with one another. And it may not be as simple as she described it now, but in many ways, the town that she described is just as independent and dignified and private as it was in the 1930s. It's truly an example of rural Southern black culture. And it's situated on just two square miles, just under two square miles. And it's made up of approximately 21 residents, 2100 residents, most of whom were born and grew up in Eatonville and who are very proud and protective of their community. It's really a, a historic model of black empowerment. So Eatonville was founded in August, 15th, 1887. And a lot of times we talk about this as the day that it was incorporated, um, the day that they, um, you know, 27 Black men got together and decided after getting land um, from between the mix of a, a white landowner and the help of a, a white philanthropist from the North, uh, they were able to buy this land and make it a town. But through all of that is politics and the idea of the electoral politics. Because one, before they can actually incorporate, they had to be Black voters. So I think when we look at holistically a Black town, um, an AME church being built there is pivotal to a part of that level of autonomy, even down to how they practice religion. Um, and we know Christianity was central in a lot of U.S. Um, spaces um, and, and still remains prevalent today, but they were able to establish that first and foremost, one of the first buildings they built, um, like I said, it still remains. Uh, so spirituality and, and Blackness have always gone hand in hand. And, and we see that also in the work of Zora Neale Hurston as well. Uh, she constantly call, calls on various forms of spirituality. When she does her own work in Eatonville, she, she listens to the music uh, and various other uh, tones from people and from her community, and she collects that in her own research. The second institution would be the Hungerford Boarding School. Uh, this school was beautiful, humongous, and was also a part of that era of um, Black e education, uh, thinking back to ideas of Booker T. Washington, uh, who would actually donate money and they would have a building named after him. The idea of, of creating separate Black institutions um, for the, the idea of education in the South. Now, education definitely looked a lot differently um, within that context, but this school would last even now with Louise Franklin being one of the oldest members of, of Eatonville, who, who remembers going to the boarding school, but because she stayed so close, she walked. Um, and Hungerford boarding school would eventually go away, but Hungerford had a Hungerford high school. Uh, I believe they had a middle school and also Hungerford elementary school still exists. Uh, and even in the 20th century, Hungerford High School had their own, their own presence. They had their own jerseys, uh, jackets, and different things like that, where it was people took very a lot of pride in being from um, that, not only that town, but going to those schools. 
So education was also at the forefront of this and education as a way to unlock other forms of, of freedoms, right? Um, so we look at the idea of them establishing their own uh, form of um, religious spaces, like, like I said, free to do it and express it how they feel and also education as well. And I think the last pillar, which people in the community as well as um, you know, see researcher would, would know first and foremost was community. They consider those to be the three pillars. Like, and that's from the very beginning, is creating a community, uh, creating a space uh, for themselves. Mm -hmm.